Hello and welcome to yet another episode of History Time. Today let us look at the history of Victoria Public Hall, the town hall of Chennai that was Madras. V P Hall was constructed in 1880s, but the city of Fort St. George itself came into existence in 1639. From then for more than 200 years there was no town hall in the city, there was no place where the public could gather for an event. The British met in a town hall that was inside Fort St. George, but there was a lot of demand from the Indians that they needed a location where they could have public meetings. In 1882 the corporation of Madras conducted a public meeting and a resolution was passed to ensure that a town hall would be constructed for the city. Land to the extent of 57 grounds, a ground being 2400 square feet was allotted next to the central station and Moore market and was handed over to a trust. The trust was to build the construction with public donation. The corporation would charge a rent of 50 paisa per ground per annum that being the land value of those days. The trust then got on with the activity. The eminent architect Robert Fellows Chisholm was commissioned to design the building and the contractor was Tati Konda Namber Malchetti. In 1887 the construction was completed and that coincided with the golden jubilee of Queen Victoria's reign. The hall was therefore named as Victoria Public Hall. And as soon as it was completed it became a very popular venue for public meetings. It is quite amazing to look at the list of people who have spoken or performed at the Victoria Public Hall. Let us just look at a sample. In the 1890s one of the earliest people to come and speak over here was Swami Vivekananda. He came here in 1897 after having participated in the parliament of religions in Chicago and was accorded a civic reception at the Victoria Public Hall. It is said that more than 10,000 people came to see him. They could not have heard him because there was no public address system in those days, but at least a thousand people would have been able to enter the hall and listen to him. It was said that 2 rupees was charged for every person who came to the venue to listen to him to perform. After Swami Vivekananda, we get to hear of Mahatma Gandhi coming here in 1915. Then he was an unknown lawyer who had done social work and had fought for the rights of Indians in South Africa and he came here as Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi. He was then not the father of the nation, but well-wishers such as G. A. Natesan met him here and he was accorded a civic reception and he spoke at the Victoria Public Hall as well. That was one of the first addresses probably of the man who would one day become Mahatma and the man who got us our independence. Chennai is considered to be the headquarters of Tamil cinema. It is often known as Hollywood because of Kodambakam. But when did we first get to see something called cinema and where did that happen? That happened in 1896 at the Victoria Public Hall when T. Stevens who ran the Madras photographic store got hold of a projector and conducted a cinematic program on December 8th that year. Thereafter cinema caught hold of the imagination of the people and it has not relinquished it even today. If those were the contributions of in political meetings and religion and other things, what about the arts? Suguna Vilasa Sabha was one of the most popular venues for the staging of plays. And in 1891, just three years after its construction or four years after its construction, the Sarasa Vinodini Sabha from Bellari came and staged plays over here. Watching this was a group of graduates from the University of Madras. And they were so inspired that they decided that they wanted to form a dramatic troupe themselves and thus came into existence the Suguna Vilasa Sabha. 
the man who would write the plays for the Suguna Vilasa Sabha would later on be known as the father of modern Tamil drama, Pamal Samanda Mudaliyar. Samanda Mudaliyar initially would take scripts from Shakespeare and convert them into Tamil plays. So, Romeo and Juliet became Jwalita Ramanan, Macbeth became Magapati, The Merchant of Venice became Vanipura Vanigan, Cymbeline became Sarasangi and so on. So, these plays were very well received and soon any staging of the Suguna Vilasa Sabha's plays were huge successes. It became customary for governors of Madras to be given farewells by the staging of the SVS Sabha's plays at the Victoria Public Hall. Any viceroy who came from Calcutta or Delhi was welcomed with the staging here as well. All the prominent socialites of the city, lawyers, doctors, all the eminences, judges, they all wanted to become members of the Suguna Vilasa Sabha. The Sabha was hugely successful and finally in the 1930s purchased its own land on Mount Road and moved there. Strangely, thereafter it never staged plays and today it is a social club. Victoria Public Hall continued thereafter. In, the nine, in 1918, the Justice Party, which was the forerunner of all the Dravidian entities, had its first conference here and thereafter it would have repeated conferences in this venue. In 1934, during its conference, a young graduate from Pachepas College would come and speak in English and analyze the resolutions passed. That was C. N. Anna Durai, whom we today revere as Aringyar Anna. He later became a very important part of the Justice Party, would later move to the Dravida Karagam, then the Dravida Munetra Karagam and so on, winding up as Chief Minister of Tamil Nadu in 1967-68. Anna was a very prominent playwright as well and many of his works would premiere at the Suguna Vilasa Sabha. In 1943, at the staging of his Chandrodayam, where the hero's role was essayed by D. V. Narayanaswamy, a friend of the hero was in the audience watching the play. He was also a small time actor at that time. At the end of the play, he was so impressed that he wanted to meet the author and D. V. Narayanaswamy organized for a meeting between Anna and the young actor M. G. Ramachandran, who would later become Makkal Tilakam and finally become Chief Minister of Tamil Nadu as well. Anna was hugely fond of Victoria Public Hall and in 1967-68 when he became Chief Minister, when he got to know that the trust that was running the Victoria Public Hall was wanting to demolish the structure and convert it into a theatre, he vetoed the idea and he said that the structure would have to be preserved as it was. He even organised state funding for the restoration but nothing came of it and Anna himself passed away as we all know just a year later. The 60s and 70s saw this hall declining. Cinema theatres had become very popular, there were other venues, people did not want to come to Victoria Public Hall thereafter. A huge set of encroachments began coming up on the compound, including a multi-storied hotel which just appeared one day without anybody noticing how it was being constructed and where permissions had been obtained. The Chennapuri Andhra Mahasabha occupied the ground floor of this structure and there many indoor sports had their introduction into the city. In the 1930s, table tennis came to India for the first time at the Victoria Public Hall. Thereafter, chess, snooker, billiards, all of these things would be introduced at the Victoria Public Hall. It was a very popular venue indeed for indoor sports. By the 1990s, the hall had really fallen on bad days. The sheriff of Madras in the 1990s, the industrialist Mr. Suresh Krishna, began attempts to restore the hall but nothing came of it. In 2009, Mr. M. K. Stalin, when he was Deputy Chief Minister of Tamil Nadu, ensured that all the encroachments were removed and the multi-storied building that had come up on the premises was also demolished. The hall was therefore restored as far as its surroundings were concerned to how it was several years ago. Three crores was allotted for the restoration of the structure. But then work began on the metro rail 
and that was going to happen all around the building. With that the restoration of the VP hall was put on the back burner and now as we all know the metro rail work is over and there is talk once again of the restoration of the hall. The idea is that it will be converted into a museum and a public performance venue. I sincerely hope that Aringyar Anna's dream of having this hall restored to its glory will come to fruition. The city really deserves this iconic Victoria Public Hall and long may it survive. Thank you very much. Thank you.